I got involved with neurofeedback indirectly, in a sense, after seeing a number of my clients who had been in therapy for well, five or six years, in some cases longer, and we'd been doing longer term intensive psychotherapy. And they would occasionally say things like, well, I understand where the feelings are coming from in my body and I can feel my feelings certainly much more and I understand the historical perspective on what I'm feeling. But it's like something just doesn't click, something just doesn't connect and they would literally do this with their finger. And after a while I started to say, well, you know what, what happened to you? Did you get hit in the head or something? And I was being a little flip but I was also beginning to be curious about whether what was happening was more than simply a neurotic reaction or a psychological reaction and I just wanted to know. So they said, well, what do you mean? Did I, did I have a car accident? Well, no. I said, no, no, no. Any, tell me anything. Did, any, did, you, did you ever get hit in the head? And then they started to say, well, Johnny hit me with a baseball bat when I was three. I got, you know, I fell down the basement steps. Um, you know, out came, you know, a certain amount of the head injury history. And I said, oh, wait a minute. You're not simply neurotic. You actually have a brain injury. Now what do we do? And so I started to explore what the possibilities were for people who had neuropsychological or neuropsychiatric disorders, what kind of treatments were available, and I started to see that they were rather limited. So the foundation got started as a result of the lack of awareness on the part of the traditional medical community here, certainly in the Philadelphia and the Delaware Valley area. There was very little understanding about what neurofeedback was. There was no connection between biofeedback and neurofeedback. They didn't understand that. There was a fair amount of doubt about its efficacy because they had not seen any randomized clinical trials in their journals about the efficacy of neurofeedback with those particular populations, like the people with traumatic head injury, ADHD, depression, anxiety, etc. So I asked you know, the people who were doing neurofeedback, where was the research? And they said that it was primarily in the neurofeedback journals, which of course these people were not subscribing to and at that time were not listed in Medline or PubMed. So that people weren't seeing the data that supported the scientific validity of neurofeedback. And so the focus of what the Quiet Mind Foundation has been doing is bringing this kind of approach, you know, a non-drug learning-based approach to schools, to charter schools specifically, and to psychiatric residential treatment facilities and outpatient facilities in the Delaware Valley, showing that in fact this kind of service can be delivered effectively in that kind of a setting with staff who are not highly skilled, trained, you know, people, but who have been given appropriate levels of technician training to deliver this kind of service and that people with a higher level of skills and training can be the ones who do the assessments and design the protocols that the children and adults need in order to remediate their symptoms. Our approach, and certainly my approach as a clinician and now our approach in terms of the research, is designed to integrate a number of different levels of analysis. So the biofeedback as an overarching concept has to do with measuring physiological activity and then representing it back to the person in some way that they can appreciate and develop some sense of instrumental control over. Right? That's what biofeedback does essentially. Neurofeedback is doing similar thing except that it's providing feedback about brainwave activity, about the activity of your central nervous system, and then providing rewards or the withdrawal of rewards of one sort or another so that your nervous system gets the information that it needs so that it can self-organize and self-correct. 
so that the learning about brainwave activity is something that's happening on a lower, a lower cortical level. It's not something that you consciously learn to do, and that's something that's very important for children and adults to develop, especially in this culture that is so easily seductively designed to attract our attention and to keep us outwardly focused rather than internally focused. And so biofeedback and neurofeedback in essence is training internal locus of control and training a sense of internal awareness and self-regulation. That's where this whole idea of self-regulation comes from. And so that's what we've been focusing on. The body awareness the level of body awareness is something that we, and I certainly as a clinician, have been focused on for many years in terms of the approach that I've taken in bioenergetic analysis. That's been a focus of paying attention to the chronic patterns of muscular tension in the body and seeing how that relates to the specific psychological patterns of dysfunction or distress that people experience. We want to take a multi-sensory and multi-level approach to the person in the way that we use neurofeedback. So it serves as a kind of foundational experience where you're helping the brain to establish a more effective and efficient way of managing stimulation and managing input. Then the other kinds of interventions that we have in terms of psychotherapy, movement therapy, music therapy, um, the nutritional and psychopharmacologic interventions that we can provide all start to have the, the psychoeducational interventions all start to have a foundation that is going to sustain those other kinds of higher cognitive interventions over the long term. But you really have to put the floor in and then add the furniture, if you will. The future of the foundation is certainly to extend the current research activities that have to do with dementia and ADHD and to explore more specific applications of neurofeedback and now the the 1072 nanometer infrared stimulation technology that we're working with Dr. Gordon Dougal in from England on uh, exploring how that technology can be deployed in combination with neurofeedback. Uh, we're very interested in that because the infrared technology really helps to boost the functioning of the neurons in the brain and that the neurofeedback then can help direct that increased level of capability in a more functionally appropriate direction. And so we're looking at both increasing capacity for the brain to function appropriately and effectively, but then also to be able to direct that increased capability, you know, in a healthier direction.